So first, let's look at the Magical Maritime Spa Foilage. Now, this is a very special tour for us. Uh, it was our first tour, so it's like our baby. Uh, of course, we're going to see the beautiful leaves changing and the beautiful countryside that we're blessed with here in the Maritimes. But few places in the world have such a rich history and a culture as the Canadian Maritimes. So it was the start of Canada, and we're going to experience it all. Now, even if you're from the Maritimes or you're familiar with the area, this is a great option for you as well. Uh, we've had a lot of local people and they've thoroughly enjoyed this tour. They've seen and heard things that have surprised them, places they haven't been to for a while or some they've never been to. And they didn't have to do the driving and it was all planned for them. We visit two UNESCO World Heritage Sites, one of the finalists of the Seven Wonders of the World, the Bay of Fundy, three national parks, four national historic sites. I could go on and on about this tour. I can guarantee you, you will come away feeling enriched, whether you're interested in history, geography, spectacular scenery, nature, food, wine, music, or local culture. There is something for everyone. And it's all handpicked for you, and we're extremely proud of this tour and the experience that it provides our guests. So as we look at the map of the routes, uh, you're gonna see lots of lines here. Uh, take a look closely though, most of them are coastal roads. That's something that sets our tours apart. Uh, people always mention the amount of time we do not spend on highways. And our guests always comment on this. Wherever possible, we go off the beaten track, we take the slow scenic roads. I can assure you some of the places we end up, tour buses and tour groups just don't go. So we have an in-depth visit to the three provinces, Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, and Prince Edward Island. To make it a little easier to understand, I like to think of it as loops uh, with mainland Nova Scotia as the hub. So we do a loop through New Brunswick here, uh, we do a loop through Prince Edward Island, and then a Cape Breton loop, all with the uh, Nova Scotia as the hub. So we start at number one down here in Halifax, and then we go down through the South Shore, spend the night there. We come back through, making our way through for our New Brunswick loop. And this way, through all coastal again, through Fundy National Park and to St. John for our two night stay. And we go, actually we go right down to St. Andrews by the sea, which is right on the, the US, the main border. Coming back, we cross over the Bay of Fundy by ferry. We spend a lot of time exploring the Annapolis Valley. Again, the side of the uh, Bay of Fundy we didn't do, making our way to Prince Edward Island. We go over the bridge, spend some time touring in Prince Edward Island, and then take the ferry back to mainland Nova Scotia. We completely go around the Cabot Trail here, making our way to the Fortress of Lewisburg. And then coming back, we do the south part of the Bordeaux Lakes, the part we hadn't seen, and then we make our way back to Halifax. So we start and end our journey in Halifax. And um, we start with a welcome reception on the first night. You get to know your fellow travelers and get some more detailed information. A great option would be to come a day early and stay in Halifax or stay an extra day at the end. Every guest that's done this, they're really glad that they've added that feature. So we start bright and early the next morning. We have a, a driving city tour of Halifax, complete with a detailed visit to the Titanic Cemetery, where we learn the history of uh, how the cemetery came to be and a little bit about the few, a few of the people that are buried there. And then it's on to iconic Peggy's Cove. And now we've arranged specifically to arrive here before the crowds get here. We almost have the place to ourselves. If you are familiar with Peggy's Cove, that's a rare feat uh, these days because so many people, so many tourists there, but we, when we get there, we have a completely uh, person-free visit. We have lots of free time in the charming Mahone Bay to stroll around. We have an entire afternoon in Lunenburg uh, where the Blue Nose is docked. While we're in Lunenburg, you have the opportunity to uh, join me on a historic walking tour. So on all of our tours, for our walking tours or activities that require a good mobility, we always accommodate anyone who can't or doesn't feel like walking. There's always an option to opt out. A bench or a quiet place to sit is, uh, is made available. Our hotels. Our hotels are all hand-picked. Uh, some are chosen for location, history, character, luxury experience, but they're all hand-chosen to enhance your tour experience. So for example, on this day, we stay in Oak Island Inn, where you can see the legendary Oak Island from the hotel. 
So leaving the south shore here, you see there's another map up in the corner. Uh, we are going to go around the edge, the Minus Basin Bay of Fundy, making our way to Joggins. When we're at Joggins, we have an exceptional guided tour of the fossils still in the cliffs in the gallery. Now, these guys are passionate about their fossils and they, they really want to share it with you. Back to the map, uh, we're off from Joggins is about here and we're going to make our way through to the New Brunswick Loop. So we go through to Shediac down here on the water and then spend the night in Moncton, another coastal drive right through for our two night stay in St. John's. So we're very proud of the included hand-picked unique attractions as well, and the exceptional guides and storytellers that come with them. For example, when we cross into New Brunswick, I showed you we go to Shediac there. We're gonna board a boat with a retired lobster fisherman and enjoy a lobster meal. As we hear about uh, the industry, we even get to pull a trap and we learn how to, how to properly eat a lobster. At Hopal Rocks, we have a chance to walk on the ocean floor of the Bay of Fundy. Uh, the guides here are as passionate about the tides as Joggins is about fossils, as Shediac is about lobster. The tides in this area are about 30 feet. Uh, so because we have parts of six days in and around exploring the Bay of Fundy, you'll experience the actual tidal cycle from all points. So at some places, we're gonna see the boats resting on the ocean floor, and then down the road, you'll see them floating and you have to actually climb a ladder to get up to them. We even drive the shore where the world's highest tides are, 55-foot tides. We've included a city tour and a two-night stay in St. John at our waterfront hotel in the heart of the old city. Now, this is important because we have a full morning on our own there to explore the downtown. So the historic city center is just right outside your hotel. St. John. Um, itself, it's the oldest incorporated city in Canada, 1785, and its loyalist heritage really shines through in the downtown. Side note, uh, St. John was the site of the first quarantine place in North America in 1785, and I never thought this information would ever be relevant when I said it on our last tour. While in St. John, we have a, a full day visit to the lovely St. Andrews by the sea, just a short drive away with a lunch on the waterfront and time to walk around this charming little town. You could actually could stop into the church and sit at the same pew where Lady Diana stayed uh, when she visited there with Charles. But that's the only thing you can sit on she did. Uh, her security team actually confiscated the toilet seat in the washroom. True story. So everything about this uh, little town is beautiful, unparalleled architecture and rich marine life. Right off the dock in St. Andrews, we enjoy a whale watching on the Bay of Fundy. Again, it's a hand-picked tour for you with a naturalist included that will explain what we're seeing and the significance of it. And not only the whales, but uh, also we're gonna see Grand Manan off in the distance and a chance to see Campobello Island up close and personal. That's uh, the residents of FDR. So another map, of course, after we depart St. John's here, we're going to go take the ferry straight across the, to Digby. It's about a two hour ferry. And then we're going to have an in-depth visit to the Annapolis Valley, spending the night. And then we're going to go through to Prince Edward Island again, you know, all coastal through here. And then making our way into Prince Edward Island over the Confederation Bridge. We have a, a highlight stay at the Digby Pines uh, and the shores of the Bay of Fundy. Now this hotel was chosen, well, because I always want to stay here. Uh, no, really, it's charming. Everybody in Nova Scotia wants to stay at the Digby Pines. A hotel can be so much more than a place to lay your head. And this one dates back to 1903. Uh, it was once a CP hotel. And in World War I, it was an officer's quarters. And Babe Ruth actually played a round of golf here when he stayed in 1936. The included dinner that night is an event, to say the least, and you don't need to dress up, but like all of our, our meals we do, it's your choice. Some people like to dress up, but it's really casual. You don't have to. It's up to you. Of course, we do get a chance to try some of the uh, local Digby scallops here. The next day, you're treated to a full day of touring the scenic agricultural area of the Annapolis Valley. Now, this is where I live, so I think it's the most beautiful, of course. Uh, but we start our touring with the first permanent settlement in Canada. Actually, the first permanent settlement in North America, north of Florida, the Port Royal Habitation. This is a very important special place for Canadians to visit. It's the very beginnings of Canada. As Samuel de Champlain, he's my favorite explorer for a variety of reasons we find out on, on the tours. But once he established the habitation in Port Royal, then he moved on to found Quebec. 
We have plenty of free time in charming and historic towns with names like Annapolis Royal and Wolfville, the home of Acadia University. Lots of stops and time to take it all in. Ending the day with a wine tasting at Pete Luckett's Winery. And of course, a chance to buy some wine and all the fixings for your, uh, your own wine and cheese before your dinner. Dinner that night is in our scenic small hotel overlooking the Annapolis Valley and close to Grand Pre. Grand Pre is the site of the Acadian deportations and we do an in-depth visit there the next morning. So for our Prince Edward Island loop, I showed you on the map, we leave the valley, a coastal route. We also actually go by the place uh, on that drive where the 55 foot tides are on the way to uh, Prince Edward Island. And we arrive in Anna Green Gables Gentle Island via the Confederation Bridge. We enjoy a two night stay in downtown historic Charlottetown, the birthplace of Confederation. Charlottetown is just this uh, picture perfect, quirky, very small town city feel. It's right out of a Lucy Maud Montgomery book. The highlight uh, there when we're in Charlottetown is the walking tour. Uh, we have a walking tour with historic character. It's dressed up in costume as if they were, they play a part like they were there during the Charlottetown conference in 1864. Every time I do this walking tour, I actually learn something interesting and new about our founding fathers. Uh, it's very entertaining to hear about all these personalities trying to conceive a country with copious amounts of liquid courage. Of course, we have, um, we have a traditional town hall style lobster dinner. We have to have that in Prince Edward Island. So on this tour, we actually, we have three lobster meals and alternate choices if that's not your thing, but to each of the meals is hand-picked. We have an Acadian experience, we have the town hall experience, and then another one, it's more like an, an upscale maybe. So it's not just the same lobster dinner three times, three different experiences. Topped off by a visit to Cavendish uh, and Anna Green Gables home and a walk on the red sands of Cavendish Beach. And that night we have a free evening in Charlottetown to explore on your own. Um, and I can give you suggestions for dinner, just a few minutes walk outside of the front door of your hotel, but the hotel also has a restaurant. Leaving Prince Edward Island the traditional way by an hour and a half ferry. It's also an experience in itself. The water's perfectly calm there usually and see lots of seals on the way and sometimes some small whales as we make our way through to our Cape Breton Island touring. We spend parts of three days touring around the stunning Cape Breton Island. Again, um, hand-picked for you. We choose to drive the Cabot Trail in a direction where we're always driving on the water side and the cliffs for optimum scenery. We stop frequently. It's a leisurely day we get out and enjoy. So that's really the beauty of a small group is that we can stop where we want it. It's not scripted. Uh, if we want, want to stop, we see something we want to do, we do. And on the Cabot Trail on our drive, we stop to uh, find that perfect place for a wonderful picnic with plenty of time to walk on the beach and enjoy the scenery. It's one of those moments that you won't soon forget, so I can guarantee you. We've also included a stay at the Celtic Lodge in the Cape Breton Highlands. Now, this is one of the signature hotels in Nova Scotia. It dates back to 1940. And it was chosen because, well, it's the Celtic Lodge. So there's not a lot of words needed there. It's certainly a highlight stay. It has a charm all its own. Uh, we arrived there just in time to uh, walk around the, the property, can enjoy the sunset from many of the scenic sitting areas scattered around. Again, the included dinner that night with local specialties is an event, uh, not just the food either. You can see the picture of the dining room. The scenery is jaw dropping. Photos do not do it justice. I really, the next morning, I have to make sure everybody's on board the bus. I have to do roll call because everybody threatens to stay at the Celtic Lodge. We also have special stops at the Alexander Graham Bell Museum in the deck where he lived out the last half of his life in the Highland Village. Uh, Highland Village is a living history museum where we learn about all things Gaelic and we have tea and oat cakes there as well. The views of the Bador Lakes here are amazing. We have a detailed tour of the fortress of Lewisburg. When you step through the Lewisburg's fortress walls, you go into like kind of time warp back to the 1700s. So we have an in-depth tour there, complete with a soldier's lunch at the fortress that are served by locals in your 1743 costumes. Uh, we have interesting cutlery there because remember we were in, we're in 1743 and we have a chance to try some fortress warm rum that's made on site. Again, all scenic, off the beaten path drives as much as possible around the, sh the shores of the Bordeaux Lakes. We even drive past uh, what was Rita McNeil's tea house and we make our way back to Halifax. Uh, we usually, we arrive back in Halifax around 6.30 that day. 